In this tutorial, we're going to learn about an app called GarageBand that we can use to create some audio projects in the classroom. And it could be teacher-centered projects, it could be student-centered projects. There's lots of possibilities for how to use GarageBand. So I'm going to tap on GarageBand. You can see it's there in the upper right corner next to iMovie. And I can just tap that to open it up. Now while that's loading, I just want to make a comment about this. GarageBand used to be a paid app. But if you have an iPad that was activated or purchased on September 1st, 2013, or more recently than that, and it can be updated to iOS 8, then you should be able to get GarageBand for free. In fact, it may already be installed on your iPad. If it's not, you can go to the App Store, do a search for GarageBand, and you should be able to install it for free. Now, if you have an older iPad and it's not capable of updating to iOS 8 or it was, you know, purchased so long ago that it just it can't get the latest version of GarageBand, then you probably either won't be able to get GarageBand on your device at all or you'll have to pay. So uh, that may be good news for some people, bad news for others, but GarageBand is now considered to be a free app with newer devices. So what is GarageBand for? Basically GarageBand is for composing music and a lot of people, a lot of bands that have CDs out, that uh, you know, have MP3s that you can purchase, at uh, in the iTunes store and other places a lot of them use GarageBand as their method of composing their music whether they use GarageBand on a computer or a laptop or whether they use it on an iPad you know a lot of those bands and musicians are using it but you know what if I teach math or science you know do I do I have any reason to use GarageBand? I may or may not be composing music with my students. And uh, so is it really useful? Well, yes, it is. Because in addition to composing music, you can use GarageBand to do any number of other kinds of audio projects. I'm going to tap on the plus sign in the upper left corner to show you how to get started. When you tap on that plus sign, it brings up some options for composing a song or another audio project. You can see that there's a smart keyboard, there's a smart guitar, there's a keyboard that's not so smart, there's some drums, guitar amp, and then audio recorder. And this is the one that I'm going to focus on most in this presentation. We also have a sampler and smart drums and some other things, smart strings. So I hope that you'll check these out there's some exciting things that you can do with this app, especially if you are a musician. Um, but I am not a musician. I can still use this app in lots of ways. And let's focus on creating something like a podcast or an audio program for your students to listen to, or maybe it's your students creating a book report this way, or you know, practicing their French or their Spanish this way or describing the steps for reducing a fraction. There's all sorts of great audio type projects that you can do with GarageBand on the iPad. So I'm gonna tap on the audio recorder. I'll just tap on that and it loads up a screen that I can use to test my audio. Now, just so you know, I'm gonna be using the built-in audio microphone that comes with all iPads, all modern iPads have one. And it's just a little tiny hole or dot really um, on the side of your iPad. If you hold your iPad in portrait mode, okay, with modern iPads, the newer iPads, it should be in the upper right corner. If you have an older iPad, it might be at the top or in another location, but just locate that little microphone. And you can see now that my mouth is much closer to it, my audio recorder volume measurement is much more hot, you know, much more powerful. Uh, if I put my mouth on the other side of the iPad, it's not coming in as strong. So it's important to be kind of close, but maybe not too close to that microphone. Now, another option would be to buy an external microphone. You can get them for like 15 bucks, 25 bucks on Amazon or other locations, and they plug in to one of the uh, ports on your iPad. And whether it be the lightning port or some go into the mini, the mini jack. Anyway, you would just buy one of those, plug it in, and you get a 
higher quality microphone that way. So that's one option if you're going to do a lot of this kind of thing. But I'll just use the built-in one. As it says here, point your iPad towards the sound you want to record, then tap the record button above to begin. So it's almost as simple as that. Okay, But before I do that, there's a couple of things that you need to know. First of all, GarageBand for iPad was created primarily for creating music. And so there's a setting that I need to change. In the upper right corner, there's a plus sign. It's easy to miss, but if you tap that plus sign, it shows you that it's set up to record in eight bars of length at a time. Okay, and I don't want that. If I'm gonna be recording a podcast, maybe an explanation of something I'm gonna teach in class, or whatever it is, I don't wanna be limited by bars in a song. So I'm going to tap on that section A, eight bars, and I'm going to change it to be automatic. If you tap that automatic button, it should just keep recording instead of stopping after eight bars of the song. So that's important to know. Now I can tap away from the pop-up, okay, to continue. The other thing that you might be aware of and might want to be aware of is that there is a metronome that will start playing as soon as I tap record. Up here toward the top of the screen, you can see this symbol here. That is the metronome symbol. And it's going to be this clicking or tick-tocking that's going to be playing as I try to record. That's very hard to keep my focus when I hear that sound. So I'm going to tap that button to turn off the metronome. And now I'm ready to record. Okay, So I'm going to tap the record button and I'm going to teach my Spanish students how to conjugate AR verbs in Spanish in the present tense. So I'll tap the record button and get started. Hola estudiantes! We're going to learn today how to conjugate verbs in Spanish, specifically AR verbs in the present tense. And we're going to use the verb visitar as our example. So anyway, I would continue to teach until I'm done, then tap stop. Okay? At that point, the audio is added to my project but I don't see it. Where is this audio I just created? Where it is, is it's built into this project, but I can't see it unless I tap up toward the top center of the screen, a little bit to the left, where it looks like almost a brick wall is there, and then a, a microphone button. Well, that brick wall is really just supposed to mean layers, like the layers of my song, the different tracks, really, of my song. So when I tapped on that, it brought me here. Now I can see my recording, and I have a playhead that I can tap and drag to advance, and then I could tap play to hear it. Now you can't hear that, probably, but I can. And then I'll just tap stop. Okay, if I like how that sounds, I'm doing well. Things are going well with my recording. Now I'm gonna tap back to the microphone and it brings me back here because I want you to see that not only can you record your voice but you can add some effects to your voice or to your students voices I could say I want my voice to sound like it's in a small room or a large room or dreamy okay or a bullhorn how about a chipmunk sound a monster a robot there's all these kind of fun different effects that you can add to your voice so that's kind of nice. And I'm just going to go with robot. Okay. I'm going to then tap on the tracks button in the upper center left of the screen to get back into my recording. Now, a lot of times your recording will be perfect. It'll be good to go. You'll really like it. But other times you might want to edit something out. Okay. And maybe students will want to do this too. Maybe they make a really bad mistake in their recording, but they don't want to have to do the whole thing over. So look what you can do. To edit a little bit, you can just put the little playhead near where you want to cut, okay? Actually, I want to cut exactly there. Then tap twice quickly on the audio track. And if you do that, you'll get this little pop-up that appears that says cut, copy, delete, loop, split, rename. Now, sometimes it takes an extra tap or two to get that to appear. So play with that a little bit, but for me, generally just two quick taps brings it up. Now that I've done that, I can tap split, and you would think that it would split and cut right there where the playhead is. It doesn't. 
Instead, it gives you some scissors, and then you have to tap and hold the scissors and pull down. It's kind of fun to do that. And it slices and splits the audio track. Now I can use the playhead up at the top if, if my fingers will uh, cooperate. I can uh, use that playhead to drag to the next part that I want to slice. Okay, Tap twice on the track and then tap split. Use the scissors and I've just cut and split that track. Okay, So the middle part there, that small segment, I just want to get rid of it. It's dead air basically. So I'll tap until I get the pop-up to appear and then I can tap delete and then I can tap on the audio track on the right and drag it where I want it to be. So that's a way that you can edit out the middle of an audio track. Editing the end is easy. You just go to the end, tap on the yellow bar, and drag to the place you want to be. Editing the beginning is easy too. Okay, But editing the center takes a little bit more work. You would tap until you get the pop-up, and then use the split tool and then the delete tool. Okay, so my podcast or my recording is going really well. It's coming along. What I need to do next is I need to consider, do I want some music? Okay, and really, during the majority of this recording, I don't think I want music. Okay, I want to be able to hear uh, my students, or I want my students to be able to hear me as I'm recording this. And so I don't want music in the background. But it would be nice to have an intro of music and an outro. I'd like to have music at the beginning and the end. So you saw what I just did. I tapped and dragged the tracks. Tap once to select, tap again and hold, and then drag to move them. And this gives me a second and a half or a second and a, an eighth that I can use for an intro song, like a jingle or something like that. And maybe I want even more space for that. So I could just tap and drag and you know create some more room. Now you have to be careful. You saw there I was kind of eating up some of my second audio clip so you have to watch out for that. You need to make sure you're not um, covering it up. Okay so now I could put in a loop and if you look at the top right of the screen there's a loop symbol. Tap on that loop symbol and it gives you some loops. So how about 70s electronic or electric piano? That sounds very nice. I'll tap on it and hold and then I'll drag it right onto the screen and it adds it in a new track. Now the reason they call these loops is because they loop. You can see right at the three second mark it's repeated. It repeats. Basically every three seconds this loop will repeat. Okay, so now what I've done, I just shortened it up a little bit. Now when I tap play, it plays my intro music, and then my podcast starts. Okay, and I could do the same thing at the end. I could create an outro. So I could tap and, and just keep tapping until I get the pop-up to appear, and then I could tap copy, and then I could tap on the timeline where I want to paste it, tap paste, and that's actually not really where I want to paste it. So I would drag it where I want it to be. I now have an intro, then my podcast content, and then an outro. Now for those of you that would like to actually compose your own music, okay, you are the high achievers, I guess, with audio, and that's above my pay grade and above my ability, but I want to give you just a glimpse of how you could do that. What you could do is go in the upper left where it says instruments. You could tap on that symbol and choose an instrument. Okay, now I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in the 70s, but uh, child of the 80s. And so the keyboard or synthesizer is very important to me. And the best music ever created uh, was created on a synthesizer, in my opinion. So. Here in my example, of course, I'm going to choose a keyboard, but you could also choose a smart guitar if you like that kind of thing. You could choose a smart bass, you could choose strings, smart drums, and you'll notice that some of these are smart and some are not. Okay, like the drums, those are just not smart. The point here is 
If you don't know much about music, you're going to prefer the smart keyboard. So that's, that's me. Or maybe the smart guitars. But you want a smart instrument if you don't know a lot about music. If you do know something about music, just choose the regular keyboard, the regular drums. You can actually, you know, do a little bit of uh, musicianship there, okay? But like I say, since I don't know a lot about it, I'm going to go with the smart keyboard, and I'll just tap. And this is really, it's a fascinating tool. You can choose your instrument by tapping where it says Grand Piano. Just tap on that, and I can choose a machine language keyboard, and this one sounds really cool. Okay. Or you could choose a polarized keyboard, there's an electric piano, classic rock organ, or uh, grand piano. So there's all of these different types of, of synthesizers or keyboards or pianos that you can choose from. So I'm going to go with the machine language one. That's really cool. And next up, I can either play this myself. Okay, I can just tap on these uh, different notes to play the notes. Or, what's really kind of fun, if I really know nothing about music, which is the case, I can go where it says autoplay, and I can change it from off to one, two, or three, or four. Okay, I'm going to go with two. Okay, and so this is going to really, or actually I'm going to go with three. This is really going to help me out now. Okay, so now when I tap, a simple song is played based on the key that I tap. Okay, I'm going to tap a couple of other notes. Basically, I am affecting the music. I know you can't hear this, but I'm affecting the music just by tapping. Each time you see a blue button appear on the screen, that's because I'm tapping with my fingers. And you can tap two at a time. You can tap one. Okay, but it's, it's basically composing music for me based on what I tap here. It's really great. Okay, now... That was all practice, but if I tap the record button, it's now recording the music that is composed based on the keys, the notes that I'm playing and touching. Okay? When I'm done, I'll tap stop, and I'm going to go back to my song, or my podcast, really. If you look up at the top, toward the top center a little bit, to the left, you can see there's my tracks button. I'll tap on it. It goes back, and here is the song that I composed with the help of the uh, GarageBand for iPad app. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the pre-made electric piano song. That's that was too easy, and it's kind of lame. You know, you want something really good, like this track that I made myself. So I'm going to tap on that until it's selected, and then I can tap and hold and drag it to the beginning of my podcast. I can shorten it up a little bit. Okay, so there's the little intro that I composed myself. Now, if you're really into music, look what you can do. You can tap on that track and choose Edit. Now, Edit didn't exist before for us. You know, when I tapped on the podcast, I didn't get Edit. But because this is a song that I composed, I can tap on it and get edit. And look what it does. You tap edit again, and it brings up each note that is part of your song. And I can zoom in on that if I need to, and then I can adjust it. I can shorten the length of that note. I can change what um, note it is. Okay. I can move it to, to C or to you know F or whatever. Um, and so it's, it's a really fun way to do a little bit of music composition right there on the iPad. Okay, once you're done fiddling with uh, the song that you made, you can tap Done. There it is. And I, I've just got this excellent intro song and then my podcast recording. And then I've got that lame uh, loop to kind of end my podcast. I could just copy this one and put it at the end, you know, like I did before. But in the interest of time, let's say that this is done and ready to be shared with the world. How would I do that? Okay, what I would do is just tap on my songs in the upper left corner and it saves it. And then I can tap on my song too, in this case, just on the, the text. And that lets me rename it. Okay, and I can give it an appropriate title, 
tap done. And that's ready to be exported as a song or as a podcast that other people can listen to. So now, how would I actually do that? How would I export it to be heard by others? What I can do is I can tap select in the upper right corner, and then I can tap on the song that I want to share with people. Now notice in the upper left corner, I have some buttons that have appeared, and the one in the far upper left corner is share. So I'll tap on that, and I'll have to decide how do I want to share this? Do I want to share it to a person? Do I want to share it to one of these other apps? Or should I just share it to iTunes? And in most cases, that's what you want to do. Share to iTunes. And I'll tap on iTunes again. There's some information there that I can change if I want to. And then I could just tap share. And this is going to compile everything together into an audio track that I could upload to the internet. I could email it to students. I could post it on my website. There's so much that I could do with this. So that's a good introduction to using GarageBand on the iPad 